everybody, and welcome to Pro Wrestling Plus. We're delighted to have you, and I'll tell you something. Have we got an agenda for you this time around? Just listen. Here are the stops where we're going to head out right about now. We're going to Vancouver, British Columbia, Kansas City, Memphis, Atlanta, Georgia, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Portland, and Calgary. Now, before I begin to sound too much like a railway train conductor, let's cut it off there, because as you know, there will be other places and other features, I am sure. The Calgary match, by the way, might prove very interesting, because it's a cage match that has never before been shown on television. However, our first port of call, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and that's for all-star wrestling. The combatants in the ring, Tom Justice and Dirty Danny Denton against the Frog and the Kamikaze Kid. And away we go. Fans really are enjoying calling up Porky, and I think mainly because they know it's getting to him a little bit. Well, it's getting, it's really getting Denton's dander up, and the thing is, he's taking it out on the Kamikaze Kid. So, you know, the more the fans shout, the more uh, Denton takes it out on uh, oh. this young kid. Vicious he, kick from Denton. You know, you might be right. Uh, the fan stopped after they realized that. Big slam well, on the Kamikaze Denton's kid. A mean, mean fighting machine, head, Carl. Now he's getting into headbutting. I know he can do that well because there's nothing else up there anyway. Well, Ed Carl, one thing you uh, fail to acknowledge is Denton is quite a scholastic individual. You know, they don't call him Dr. Denton for nothing. I mean, the man is quite a renowned uh, doctor, as you know. His field is, uh, is psychiatrics. He's, uh, you know that, Ed Carl. His I mean, field is psychiatrics. He was in a hospital. I think he escaped. He still has the gown that he comes out with here. No, no, Ed. This is, uh, you're talking about Dr. Denton here. The closest thing he's ever been to a doctor is he was in a doctor's office once, and he condemned them. I think we're going to have to send you over to ha have your head read, Ed Carl, if you keep up talking like this about uh, the good Dr. Denton. Why is it not read by anybody like Denton, I might accept. Well, Ed Carl, you know, whenever I need a little help, I always drop down to the good Dr. Denton's office. Now, well, in your case, he could give you some help. I mean, I understand that. Froggy having Boy. a great time with Tom Justice. He sure dropped. He sure dropped Justice with that elbow right there. You know, this this Justice looked like somebody you ought to manage. Well, I'm out here scouting, Ed Carl. I'm always looking for new talent. This they sure got a vocal crowd back here, Ed Carl. Have we ever? Have we now, ever? Now look at this move. He's got him up for a suplex. Oh, look at this. He oh. had him up for a suplex and the kid Good crossed night. body block. That is it. I've never seen a move like that. The last time I saw a move like that was in Japan, Ed Carl. You know, I could have broken his back. I uh, I must admit, that's a very, very vicious move, but the match goes. The match goes to the Kamikaze Kid and the Frog. The well, sir, the Frog and the Kamikaze Kid scoring the win there from Vancouver. We head off to Kansas City. Now, I want to tell you something that's particularly interesting to me, at least, but I'd like to share it with you, about the bout we're about to see. And that is the fact that it involves Bulldog Bob Brown. He all of a sudden has shown up as a co-host on TSN Wrestling. And, uh, well, maybe now you're going to find out from whence he came i mean he is all butter and platitudes when he gets on our show maintaining his past is lily white we are about to expose i am sure bulldog because you're going to see him in action in the ring he wrestled by the way in calgary a number of years ago he forgets too that he was one of the most hated wrestlers of all time there again he tries to paint a very pretty picture about his career. Well, we see in this bout uh, him in action, that's Bulldog Bob Brown, against Curtis Hughes. It's a time limit match, and we're going to see Brown taking all of the shortcuts possible in order to win. Brown firing away, a solid right, right to the face of Curtis Hughes. Hughes trying desperately to get back in the ring, Brown having no part of it.
Brown keeping Hughes outside the ring. Hughes trying to get back in, a shoulder to the stomach. That beautiful sunset flip over the top rope. One, two. Oh, that was almost three. Jeez, I thought he had him. Almost a three count. Brown right back to the eyes again. Taking the shortcuts again. But Hughes determined. Fighting back with the knee to the midsection. And a second one. Hughes firing back. Trying to collect his wits here. At the same time, staying right on top of Brown. Look at those forearms. Curtis Hughes continues to fire away at Bulldog Bob Brown. Working across his back. Fires him across the ring. I think the whole ring shook with that one. Hughes, really, he thinks he's working on a football dummy there. Right back to his K-State days. Bob Brown, right back to the eyes. Well, nice reverse. Big backdrop. Brown down, hard on the mat. Hughes coming after him again. Taking the fight to Bob Brown. Into the corner again. There's that football tackle. Curtis Hughes with the big football tackle. Again, another shoulder block. And Brown is down. And then Russell Sapp up on the apron again. Wait a minute. Curtis Hughes, he's got him. He's got him by the throat. He's just lifted Russell Sapp up off his throat. Jeez. Curtis Hughes strangling the life out of Russell Sapp. Wait a minute. Brown's got the cane. Oh, right across the back and the neck of Curtis Hughes. Hughes slumped over. I don't know if the camera saw it. Brown was distracted. The referee was distracted when Masachono came to the ring. He's got a three count. <laughs> We've got the evidence now. Brown winning by devious means, and maybe they'll... That'll stop all of the babbling that he comes up with relative to his lily white past. I'm going to shut him up with that next time we see him because you saw him for what he was. That was out of Kansas City. And by the way, next week from Kansas City, we'll be presenting Midget Wrestling. That's on next week's show. But right now, it's time to take a trip to a new wrestling association. Uh, the one that we introduced to you last week that was out of North Carolina, Charlotte, specifically the Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlantic Coast Wrestling. We're going to see the World Junior Heavyweight Champion, Nelson Royal. My heavens, I haven't seen Royal in 15 years or so. He was quite a wrestler in those days, obviously. He's still got a few kicks left in him. He's in a match here against David Isley, and Royal uses every single trick in the book to win the match. He hasn't changed. A lot more, Rick Stewart. This man is the consummate wrestler. He's sharp. He's in shape. He's aggressive. He knows where he is at all times in the ring. And he knows exactly where to put his body to do the most damage. Caught there by David Isley. You saw that Royal tried to keep rolling to turn that arm bar into his vantage. Isley was smart enough to sit down on the thing and yep. hang on to the arm bar of Nelson Royal. Good shot by our cameraman here, giving us Sasha's view of what's going on in the ring. <laughs> I, you know... I've been doing some shopping for some leather for my lady. Right. Can you imagine what that leather outfit that Shasha is wearing must have cost? Uh, I wouldn't want to have to go out and be the one to pay for it. Oh, like man. That. This, I mean, leather and silver. That is a gorgeous outfit. And uh, now Royal. <laughs> I'd hate to pay for that, but boy, if, I tell you what, with a lady like that, you got to keep her in fine threads, huh, Rick? I imagine so. <laughs> Inside the ring, Nelson Royal castigated by the referee for some of his tactics. Perfectly legal hip lock takedown, but look how Isley stays in the thing. Cup in the chin and Nelson Royal trying to float up with a cross face, trying to keep something going even as he's on the bottom in this situation. Trying to keep his shoulders off the mat very hard. Yeah. Right now, he does turn the situation over, and now he's got Nelson down, and he's rubbing his face into the ring. Nelson telling the referee we're close enough to the ropes, but the referee not agreeing. Now, Sasha not real happy with this. She's uh, trying to encourage Nelson Royal to come on. David Isley, a clean break. You David see Isley. a lot of amateur background in David Isley, especially the way he works around the head of Nelson Royal. Uh, wrestling coaches from high schools and college always say you control the head, you control the body. Where the head goes, everything else follows. That may be Isley's idea in this match. Ooh. If he is, he's in against a head hunter in Nelson Royal. That's 
right. Nelson will go after one of those five points of balance. Right now, though, Nelson trying to keep his balance as he's slammed out of the mat. There's a two count, and the champion kicks out. Isley goes right back in and does a front face lock, but he left it right open for Nelson to come out. Now, look There's at that. Just manhandled. Uh, that experience that makes Nelson Royal the world's junior heavyweight champion just... There's uh, there's no substitute for it in the world no. of professional sports, be it in any sport. And uh, Nelson Royal certainly knows that uh, almost without exception, a situation that he get into, he's got the talent and the ability and the knowledge to get oh, out. Oh, Rick. Now, we saw this last week, and for some reason, Nelson Royal using a low blow to set up this spinning toe hole, but once again... It is victorious, but I got to admit, I can't say I'm happy with what we see the champion doing with a low blow by the knee going. Time now to take a commercial break, after which we'll be back with action from Memphis and San Juan, Puerto Rico, right here on Pro Wrestling Plus. Pro Wrestling Plus, as we now turn our attention to Memphis, Tennessee, for a handicap match. Now, Sid Vicious. The newest member of the stud stable takes on a pair of wrestlers in this one, Chris Fraser and Rodney Dapper. They're both, and one at a time, try to take on Sid Vicious. Uh, I hate to see it, but I kind of agree with Robert Fuller. Look at that. I've seen Sid Vicious in action, and I, I think if he had four in there all at the same time, Mr. Vicious would give him some kind of battle. Well, I know that uh, he goes over 300. I don't know exactly what. Do we have any uh, specs Well, he won't on tell you. He, he says uh, he weighs 300 plus. That's all you need to know. I said, where are you from? He said, ain't nobody's business where yeah. I'm from. Yeah. That's, and, that's and his attitude. Chris Frazier flipped across and rolling out here. You guys don't get the message, what do you? you? mean, you guys? We want more than out here, Lance. You know what? You're an obnoxious announcer. You know that. You're rude and everything else. We come out here and we make a challenge. And after Mr. Vicious gets finished with these guys here, we want more than out here. You know something, Tommy? Morton is nothing but a yellow-bellied coward. And as soon as Sid gets through with his idiots, we're going to show you just how yellow he really is, Lance. <laughs> yeah, well, you, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you still, I'm still telling you, you don't come out here and down on the floor of Rodney Napper yeah, being there. destroyed yeah. by Sid yeah, Vicious on, as this Vicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. That's or it. he is That's a giant. The Morton, if no, he ever gets out worse. here. It's going to be hey, listen, I would remind you that it was Morton and Dundee that put you guys out of the yeah, Southern Tank Tournament. they had to use that little punk kid to do it. That's right. They had to cheat, Lance. They're not like us. We so let's see, how much guts, everything, right? let's see how much guts this yeah, Morton's oh got. God. You know, I don't think he's got it. Like I said, he's a yellow He's a gutless cow. wonder. He looks like he ought to be on a street corner selling ice cream yeah. somewhere, Lance Russell. Vicious one, two, three. He's got them both right there at right one. Now. Well, <laughs> The handicap didn't stop Sid Vicious, did it? There you go. Traveling now to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Are we bouncing around today or what? San Juan, Puerto Rico, our next port of call, a match involving Bobby Jaggers and Rufus R. Jones. Now, I've got to explain about this. The commentary for the bout was dubbed on after the bout took place. So we have Jaggers doing the commentary about the match in which he is involved on the screen, okay? I think maybe you'll find the commentary just as entertaining as the match. His lineage back that far, Bobby. Well, you know why they gave him that many names? They knew he wouldn't graduate from school, and they wanted him to learn to read and write real well. <laughs> now, Rufus blow, Jones, blow, elbow. Man. Ah, caught him with a knee. Yeah, I caught him good with a knee, too, baby. I'm right back where I should be in the driver's seat. <laughs> right back to that reverse chin lock, applying the pressure. No. Yeah, look, at that, look at that, look at that. I'm making that ugly man uglier. <laughs> well, I can't say he's pretty, Bobby, but he's a good wrestler. Is he, he's good, yeah, baby. He's good for a whipping post for me, man. I'm beating him up like a dog. Good times going through some rough times right now at the hands of one half of the Kansas Jayhawks. Myself, Rick St. James. <laughs> 
also voted the commentator of the year by the World Wrestling Council you know? at the sixth awards banquet. Ha ha ha, Rick St. James. I really don't remember any about anything about that, Bobby. I knew you wouldn't, brother. Now here's where I mess up. See, I drop a knee on him. He's got a hard head. You can't do those kind of things, man. Drop the knee, and now he's got a, a set. His knee's in sad shape now. See, I go right back to him. I just keep beating him up, brother. I don't sit there and cry over a little bit of pain like I know, you would. I know why you stay on top of him. You're afraid he might get somewhere in this match and really do some damage to your body. I'm doing the damage, baby. I'm doing the damage. Take a look. Watch the big elbow right on his nose, brother. Oh. <laughs> oh. Spit those teeth out, Rufus R. Jones. Are you trying to do some cosmetic surgery on this man? I'm just trying to beat him up, brother. When you get in the ring with me, brother, you're inside my dog yard. And I'm the meanest dog in that yard, Jack. That's a pretty big dog you're biting on right now. But I'm biting him, all right. Let me grab my thumb. But see, I just drive a knee in his back, and that brings him down to his knees, a cowering dog he is. Watch the old left hand. Boom, baby. Hey, Tyson, take a look, baby. I'm still knocking him down. <laughs> You're a big man, Bobby Jackson, but you're up against a mighty big man in Rufus Sard Jones. And there we see. Look, it's like he's coming back. A left. Another left. Pure action from Rufus Sard Jones now. Oh, a little bit of boxing action. Uppercut. Another uppercut. All right. And Jagger staggered. Big double punch and Jagger's down. He doesn't even know where he is, Bobby. The man's hit me with illegal punches, man. They ought to be disqualified for this, man. You know that? Ricky Vargas, Benitez Lopez, Gomez, Gonzalez, Hernandez, and Fernandez. Now the man's uh -oh. headbutting me, and he's holding me by the hair, man. That's a disqualification. I, I think Bobby's out on his feet with that big headbutt he just got. Another one. Oh, oh, oh. Almost went down of his own. The man, the man, the man is not even wrestling right now, ladies and gentlemen. He's reverted the barrio pressure. He's punishing Bobby Jack. Ah, here we go. I suplex him, baby. Look at the suplex. Look at the suplex. Look at the suplex. Bang. One, two, three, and I win the match, baby. I got him with a suplex. Barely the back suplex, but Ricky Vargas says the winner is Rufus R. What Jones. The, no way. All right, Ricky Vargas. As you saw there, the referee awarded the bout to Jones in that particular match. We're traveling now to Birmingham, Alabama, tag team match from the Continental Wrestling Championship area, and it's for the tag team title. The champions, Dirty White Boy and Stubbs, the challengers, Brad Armstrong, and the Bullet. There is outside interference in this bout, and, uh, well, why am I telling you? Let's take a look and see for ourselves between the bullet and brad and the dirty white boy tony anthony and mr perfect jerry stubbs hard right to the midsection doubles anthony over goes down to the canvas and the bullet just choking away at stubbs oh this one this one was bound to happen just an all-out war between these two teams. Brad Armstrong bringing it out on the floor. Head first in the turnbuckle he goes. And again, the bullet over in that corner working on Stubbs. Out on the floor is Anthony. Wait a minute. Masked Man comes in the ring. He has a towel over the mouth and nose of the bullet. I don't know exactly... It's not a choke, but he's going over the mouth and the nose of the bullet. And he is, appears to be out. He appears to be out. Brad Armstrong pulls the mask off, and there under the mask is Dirty Dutch Mantel. Now they're both working on Brad Armstrong. These, they got problems here. The Armstrongs, uh, Bullet, and Brad have problems. What's this? Scott Armstrong, it's Scott Armstrong in the ring. He nails the white boy, he nails Stubbs. Here comes the mask man, super kick Scott Armstrong. Going to work on the team of that. Dutch Mantel interfering there for the team of Stubbs and Dirty White Boy. Uh, Scott Armstrong standing by for the team of Brad Armstrong and the Bullet. And as you could see, it was a good thing he was there. Okay, World Class Championship Wrestling now. Dallas, Texas is our next stop. The combatants in the ring, Eric Embry 
and Iceman King Parsons and all kinds of dubious activities take place in this one. Henry with a tremendous drive and the referee goes down. He got a thumb or an elbow in the eye, I think, accidentally. And with the referee out of the way, Black Bart heads Iceman. He's Kane, holds Henry, and it's Black Bart that gets hit. John Keaton took a finger or an elbow in the eye. He's back on his feet. Here's Iceman continuing with the hip butt. Henry ducks again. Iceman from behind is in a sleeper hold. There comes Black Bart again. He's got the key. And this time it's going to work. Black Bart annihilating Embry with Iceman's key. He hits the referee. How much more of this is going to be tolerated? Let's go to Joe Rinelli, but stand by in the ring. Referee John Keaton is disqualified partially for interference on the part of Black Bart. The winner of the match, Eric Embry. Uh oh, this may be an attempt to collect the promised money from Akbar. They're going to try to break an arm here. Arm stretched over the chair. Ice man with a cane. Crowd on their feet down. And Embry jerks the arm away just in time. away but they're still after him the chair is flattened out now here comes black Bart down with a tremendous shot with a chair ice man with a cane they're trying to collect the 50 how do you spell yuck b-l-a-c-k b-a-r-t black bart that's totally disgusting and it shouldn't happen in a ring uh, yeah okay atlanta georgia next stop on this week's trip Boy, are we going around the wrestling circuit. Now we have a look at Southern Championship Wrestling. Ray Candyman Candy in the ring against Steve Bennett. These two are huge guys. And on my left, from Atlanta, Georgia, Ray the Candyman Candy. Ray Candy. One fall with a 20-minute time limit. All right, a classic confrontation and a battle between two big men. Uh, young Steve Bennett, of course, the Bennett brothers, a uh, different little philosophy on professional wrestling, but uh, that'll be our TV main event. Now, Gordon, Gordon, you heard that, right? When Rich came out and he made the match that's, that's been sanctioned by you, that's okay. Yes, sir, we, we heard it and we sanctioned it, 100%. All right, that'll be our TV main event. Matter of fact, that'll be coming up next, and we'll just push that other match we had scheduled back to standby, okay? If that's all right with you. Uh, Southern heavyweight title, Steve Pritchard against Tommy Rich. Meanwhile, in the ring, Steve Bennett's just all over Ray Man, Candy. I'm telling you what. This is a surprise in here. I, I never believe this. Candy fighting his way back out of the corner. Steve Bennett's in that pressure situation, though, too. If he can come up with a win on Ray Candy. You got so much young talent coming in now. Everybody's hungry, and it's just... There's a big career boost for him right now. He's proving out. It's like he's sending out a message to everybody. He's here to win. And he's here to beat people. Ray Candy and Steve Bennett, not a wrestling move yet. Just uh, hammer and tongs, uh, fists and feet just since the, it's since the very start of the match. Rick, I tell you what. Rich is a real good friend of mine. If you don't mind, I'm going to take a few minutes off. I'll be back. I want to go talk to him about this match coming up. And Fantastic. Well, okay I know him, okay? uh, thank you for coming out, Thank you very much. I'll see you at, when that match comes on. All right. John Michael's leaving the desk, going back to uh, try to help uh, Steve Pritchard get psychologically prepared for today's TV main event. A crack for Steve at the Southern Heavyweight Championship. And uh, you think Tommy Rich was surprised last week? I bet you five bucks if I was a betting man that uh, Steve Pritchard's got some plans in store for that Tommy Rich, which is very welcome to have a new Southern Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> God love that. Candy, finding his mark now against uh, Steve Bennett, who, of course, the, the veteran wrestler Ray Candy. Uh, Bennett had him going there for the first couple of minutes, but uh, the, the mark of experience starting to show here, though. The ring wars that Big Ray has been through all across the world uh, got him used to that kind of tactics. Maybe he wasn't expecting it from Big Steve, but uh, he's certainly seen that uh, style of wrestling before. Bennett drives Ray Candy into the far turnbuckle, goes to squash him in the corner, comes up with an empty corner. Ooh! Ray 
Candy just destroys Big Steve Bennett, our TV. Yes, a couple of big guys there, and we intend to have a look at a couple of big guys from back in the 50s when we return on Pro Wrestling Plus after this commercial break. promised before the break, we're going back to the 50s to present our Matt Classic. This is a wrestling workout, which took the form of a handicap match. Don Arnold, former, a former weightlifting champion, by the way, agrees to wrestle the tag team of the great Bolo and Tom Rice. And I think you'll agree, this is really very entertaining. Bill Welch at ringside, ready to report our workouts as they get underway at the moment with that famous tag team pair of the great Bolo and Tom Rice, choosing as an opponent today, Don Arnold, the former national weightlifting champion. Well, the great Bolo wears his famous mask even when he's in here in the ring for a workout. And uh, of course, he likes to conceal his identity from all of them, and at the moment, he's getting a bit of a lesson from Tom Rice in just how to use that shoulder and that elbow to keep an opponent from getting away from him when he has him pinned on the ropes as he did Don Arnold just a moment ago. Now, let's see if it works any better as they come out and go into the referee's hole. Look out, Don Arnold takes a side headlock on there, and despite the fact he has the mask on, those ears are hurting as Don Arnold, with his tremendous strength, bears down on them, and Tom Rice has to come to the rescue here to get his partner, the great Bolo, out of a bit of trouble. Well, he's going to demonstrate just how you do break this. Notice how he hooks the far arm and tugs and takes down, and Don Arnold is out of the headlock. He's lost the hold immediately. And immediately, of course, the great bowl is going to come in and see what he can do. But first, he wants a short instruction on how to get that far arm, the outside arm, hook it and take it away to break the hold. Now, the great Bolo and Don Arnold move in once again. Chin locking each other, they go to the ropes, and nobody has a chance to do much of anything. The break is ordered here by Tom Rice and requested by the great Bolo, who is not very happy about that pressure underneath the chin. As you know, Don Arnold obviously is tremendously strong. A great football player in his collegiate days, and then, of course, the national weightlifting champion. Chin locks again, onto the ropes once more. Here's the break with Tom Rice coming in to take his partner, the great Bolo, away from Don Arnold. Look out, Bolo couldn't resist the temptation. Even though it's only the workouts, he had to hook that leg, and he wants to wrap it around the rope, but Tom Rice talks him out of it. So they move out to the center once again, and now Tom Rice tells him something else he should try here when he gets himself in trouble with those referee holes. Matter of fact, he's going to demonstrate it on Don Arnold by tugging on his head, taking him down onto the canvas, moving around to get a sort of a half Nelson there and an arm lock at the same time. So quickly, the great Bolo moves around to see just how the hold works, and now apparently he wants to do the same thing. He wants to be sure also how you pull that head down to get the man underneath, but Bolo insists you should put the arm across the face. He says the pressure on the eyes and on the bridge of the nose is more effective than the arm lock. And Don Arnold turns the tables on Tom Rice. Tom Rice was supposed to take the hold, but it's Don Arnold instead. And look at the pressure he's got on that chin. And the great bowler moves in and says, now look, you're supposed to be the pigeon, and we're supposed to put the holes on you. As a matter of fact, Tom Rice goes over, complains to the officials that Don Arnold is not cooperating with he and with Tom Rice in the workout here this afternoon. Well, let's see if they can get it going a little bit better. This time it's the great bolo. He thinks he has things all settled down. Matter of fact, he wants to be friendly with Don Arnold because he wants a chance to try to work that face lock. In they move once more into the referee's hold and a lift. Look out, great Bolo is on his way and with the help from Tom Rice, and that's what it took, he finally gets Don Arnold down onto the canvas, but off his back immediately. Don Arnold got himself out of trouble in a hurry with that tremendous strength of his. And here's Tom Rice a little bit discouraged with his partner at the moment because he couldn't keep himself topside in that last hold. So once more, they move to the center of the ring to try some more maneuvers here as both boys are anxious, of course, to improve this style. Look how Don Arnold goes behind, takes a full Nelson, and he's really got one on there. That hurts, and Bolo is glad to get out of it. Tom Rice thinks he has the answer on how to break a full Nelson such as this on a go-behind. Let's see if he can. One of his tricks, of course, is to use that foot. He's very adept at that, particularly when you consider the size of the man. And turn, he says, and give him a fork judo chop at the throat. That's what Tom Rice likes to see done. Now, the great Bolo, who, of course, relies a great deal more on strength than anything else, apparently hasn't got this break from the full Nelson figured out. But you know, no matter what wrestling hole there is, there's always a counter move to it. And give a wrestler time enough, and he'll find a way to use it. Wait a minute, Tom Rice chopped once at the throat there, and Don Arnold didn't particularly like that. They move in once again into these holes, and go behind, and it's Don Arnold with the hold. Now, let's see if the great Bolo has figured out how to break this one. 
He's trying the wrong way. As a matter of fact, Don Arnold puts too much pressure on, and Tom Rice finally breaks the hole because he feels that it hurts a little more than he wants it to when his partner's concerned in it. Tom Rice is a little bit unhappy, and no wonder. He just, uh, I think, has lost his temper as he usually does whenever he gets into the ring for a workout, a match, or whatever you have. And look at that arm lock put on by Don Arnold. Tom Rice calling for help. The great Bolo is over to break it. And uh, Tom Rice, well, here he is with one of his usual tricks, grabbing a hold on the break, even though it's just supposed to be a workout. And Bolo pulls off Arnold. And uh, as a matter of fact, Arnold wasn't sure just who was going to put the hold on him next. So Tom Rice moves out once more, comes in for a body lock, and he is, uh, of course, in danger of losing it. And the great Bolo says, break for a moment. I think I can show you how to really make a body lock work. He puts it on, and here is the trick. Get that uh, head up underneath the chin of your opponent. It keeps him off balance. It keeps him from using his full muscular power. And on top of that, if you wear a mask like the great Bolo, you make it hurt a great deal when you rub back and forth underneath that chin. So Tom Rice, having learned his lesson, moves in now to try for the body lock to see if he can make it work. He goes in and takes it, and uh, the bell has just sounded now to end this workout, but it looks like we're going to have a little trouble getting... From the ring we go to outside the ring for an interview with Scott Armstrong. We saw him earlier in the Continental Wrestling Championship uh, area. Now he's pulled up stakes and he's gone elsewhere, specifically to the Atlantic Coast Championship Wrestling area. And he's with Joe Petersino for an interview as he tells us why he is where he is. I'm here with Scott Armstrong, and Scott, I know you are new to ACW, as everyone is, but I know the reason you're here is you're still chasing after that World Junior Heavyweight title. You're exactly right, Joe. You know, I'll tell you something. I want to take this time out and say a special hello to beautiful Bonnie back at the station. But I also wanted to say, ACW, I tell you what, we've got some of the most talented people in professional wrestling right here, and uh, number one on my list, like you were saying, Joe, is Nelson Royal. He is the World Junior Heavyweight Champion, a title which I've held two times myself, and I'm really looking Looking forward to getting back in the area, making a name for myself, and uh, try to do a little something about that title. Well, I know that the super kick is your chief weapon, and I know that Nelson Royal has felt that super kick several times, and I think that we can probably look forward to some great matches between you and the world champion. Well, I appreciate that, Joe, you know, and I think so, too. You know, the man, uh, no doubt about it, people holler at him, call him Grandpa and all kind of stuff. Mm. Well, hey, let me tell you something. Anytime you think the man is a little too old to wrestle, jump through those ropes with him, because I'll tell you something, the man is ready to go an hour if need be, or probably longer than that. I uh, hear say from the referee, referee comes over, and I think Nelson Royal must be a little paying him to say something because referee will come over and say, he's over there doing Hindu squats, been doing for 30 minutes. I don't know if that's psychological warfare. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you something, brother. When it comes time for me to wrestle you, Nelson Royal, Scott Armstrong will be in shape and ready to go. Armstrong making it clear that he's there to challenge Nelson Royal for that World Junior Heavyweight Championship belt. And um, he should have a good shot at it, really. We're going to take a look now at the ratings. And this week, we're going to concentrate on the AWA and the CWA. We are headed for Portland, Oregon now. We've been showing you, I think you'll agree, a lot of exciting things coming out of that territory, particularly in the tag team division. And speaking of tag teams, we're going to um, switch from them at the moment to the singles action because that too has become very prominent in Portland. In other words, they're getting some great wrestling going there right now. The two in the ring, Matt Bourne, and Abu Dadin. Well, do you want me to say it twice? Abu Dadin. I didn't think I could do it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Tear the 
this evening will be one fall. Introducing in this corner 250 pounds of Buddha D. Niera. His opponent in this corner, 248 pounds from Milwaukee, Matt Bourne. There'll be one match following this. We have less than one minute of television wrestling time left. Now, I don't know. We may have to... Uh, to leave this match in progress. I would imagine that's what's going to be happening because these uh, these guys, they don't, they're not even going to get started before we have to say goodbye. Oh, baby, is it shaping up for next Saturday night or what? If you're in the area, be here at the House of Action because now we're going to have Buddy Rose and Mike Golden going at it. And I have a feeling the equalizer may be exactly that next Saturday night. Abuda Dean, outside and Matt Bourne inviting him back in. Hey, he's got a hold of his head. He's got a hold of his ears. Matt Bourne really unloading on Abuda Dean. Abuda Dean comes back with a hard left hand. And now uh, Matt Bourne's leg is caught. His leg is caught in the ropes. And Abuda Dean just comes crashing down on him with those elbows. Now he pushes referee out of the way. And again, crashing down on Matt Bourne. Uh, he, uh, Buddha Dean may get himself disqualified here, but he keeps messing around and pushing the referee like that. But Matt Bourne has got to get free from those ropes, and that's it. That's it. Uh, Buddha Dean has been disqualified. He got himself disqualified, and these guys, I think, are going to be battling into the crowd or into the parking lot for quite some time. And now look at this. Matt Bourne's got a hold of a Buddha Dean, got him by the chin and by the nose. We're going to take a commercial break right now. When we return, we've got a previously non-televised cage match out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, but right now, a commercial break, and then we're back with Pro Wrestling Plus. Back to Pro Wrestling Plus. And you know, in this segment of the show, ordinarily, we show you some action from Florida. This time around, we're going to leave that out because we've got something we'd like you to see out of Calgary. It's a cage match, never before shown on television. It was held recently in Calgary, and it featured the Dynamite Kid and Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldogs, in action as they challenged for the International Tag Team Championship belts, those belts held by the Cuban Commandos, uh, Comrade Jerry Morrow, and the Cuban Assassin. So. Fasten your seat belts. Here we go. Davey Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid coming in for the cage match. It's going to have you have a look at what the cage looks like. The championship is on the line. And it will be strictly a fight to the finish. It will have to be decided. A disqualification doesn't mean anything. Bulldog, this is mayhem. This is the match that you've been trying to talk to me for about a week now. This is the match that you said the British Bulldogs are going to breeze through. This is the match you said they're going to lose their titles. Now, I'm going to sit side by side with you, Ed Whelan, and when the smoke clears the ring, you'll see the, the Cuban commandos wearing those belts. I think the British Bulldogs has been overrated for some time, and they yeah. haven't been meeting a lot of stiff competition. Now, nice you ever night. stop for a breath? <laughs> you ever stop for a breath? I don't believe a word of what you're saying. You're watching the British Bulldogs, obviously, challenging for the International Tag Team Championship belts. They're in the ring at a combined rate of 476 pounds against the Cuban Commandos. 473 pounds, not much difference in weight. The commandos consisting of the Cuban assassin and comrade Jerry Morrow, the Bulldogs, of course, Davey Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid. A cage match, it has to be a fight to the finish. Disqualifications don't mean a single thing. Dynamite, 
going after Jerry Morrow. And he grabs the strap from him while Davy Boy Smith tries to run the Cuban into the cage. And the Cuban decides not to cooperate. Good clothesline by Dynamite. It's a great combination, these Bulldogs. One, two, now only a two count there. I haven't seen a cage match in a long time. Well, you know, cage matches are very, very brittle. I'll tell you, they're made out of wire. The parts of the cage is steel. And I'll tell you what, you get your head knocked up against those things. And hey, you'll see stars for some time. It's just a brutal match, but I like it because I'll tell you what, I come from where it's always brutal, you know, from the United States of America. And I'm going to tell you, I like the Cuban commandos. I know that your version's different. British Bulldogs is probably the greatest thing that you've ever saw. But believe me, Ed Whalen, They'll get the cookie tonight. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I'm surprised that an American would be in love with the Cubans. I don't think that's normal behavior for most Americans. See, that wasn't very nice of you to well, say. Well, I'm just things. throwing that in. Look out! Watch this. Oh, bango! Caught him in the back on that cage. Time. Dynamite Kid is having his problems against the Cuban. David Boy Smith, the action heating up. You see what they have to resort to? They got a belt around his neck. If they're so great and they're so wonderful the way you say it is, why don't they go in there and wrestle these guys instead of using an illegal object? Well, it's. Uh, I don't believe you, but the illegal object was brought in by the commandos. My dear sir, I want to recommend a certain optometrist to you. We'll do that after the fight. You are watching, yes you are, a steel cage match for the international tag team belts, the champions, the Cuban commandos, the challengers, the British Bulldogs, and right now, the Cubans are up top on both sides, both counts. Well, you know, I've met the Cubans. I saw them wrestle right across the country. I've never did see them in easy matches. And lo and behold, here tonight, what do I see again? A big cage match, another brutal match. So I say, hey, yeah, they got their hands full, but the bottom line, Mr. Whalen, they are the champions. Well, that's true, but for how much longer? That is the question. The Bulldogs working, the Cuban in some problem areas in the corner. Pile driver coming up with dynamite. He dropped Morrow. Dynamite cannot run, or rather, Davy Boy cannot run the Cuban into that steel screen. There is no time limit on this thing. There are no rules, really. Five minutes, John, five minutes. And we're at the five minute mark, but knuckle dusters were being used by the Cuban on the leg of Davy Boy. Well, Ed, what match are you watching? I haven't saw no brass uh, knuckles. I'm talking about your optometrist. You got a problem, Buster. Where's he going? Is he trying to get out of here? I think he's trying to get out of here. Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Headbutt. Has he got him? Oh, Morrow. Morrow dropping from the top. Meanwhile, David Boy was getting bulldogged on the far side. The dynamite kid seriously hurt. He dived off the top rope. And he hit that hard body of Jerry Morrow. That's like cement anyways. He's hurt. And if Jerry gets up, he can take an advantage of it. Oh, no! Davey Boy hit it! Davey Boy hit it! Davey Boy hit it! it! It happened! I can't it believe it! It happened! That. Yes, it did! What happened? Your new international tag team champions are the Bulldogs! I can't believe it! Believe, Buster! Believe.
believe, I just can't believe that they lost the titles. I'm sure the British Bulldogs did something nasty to win those belts. Oh, no, not at all. It was one fair and square. The crowd is ecstatic. Just a minute. Maka Singh comes in, and he runs Davy Boy. The title has just been won by the Bulldogs, but Maka Singh's come into the premises. Dynamite Kid, who's shaken up. It's three against one. Oh, no, they're going oh, to no. They're gonna destroy them now. No matter what they do, no matter what they do, the belts belong to the Bulldogs. All right, are you set for fan forum? We do have letters from you. We thank you for that. And I'm just going to read a couple of them here, two or three of them this time around, to see what's doing with your opinions and anything else that's news from the world of wrestling. Dave Whitford, Ottawa, Ontario, says, I watch your show every Monday. My favorite wrestler is Chris Benoit. I can't wait for the return of the British Bulldogs and Don the Rock Morocco. And my most hated wrestler is Johnny Smith. Well, as you know, Dave, by now I'm sure the Bulldogs and Morocco are back in the Calgary territory, and that's certainly good news in that neck of the woods. Now, he's asking, can you try to get a match, uh, this is for the Matt Classic portion of our show, between Ric Flair and Harley Race that was staged in 1983. It was in North Carolina. I think that's Greensboro, North Carolina. And can you get a match between Kerry Von Erich and Jerry Lawler. We'll do our very best, uh, Dave, and see if we can get that for an upcoming Matt Classic. It's not always easy to dig some of these things out, but all a steer can do is try, right? Okay, Dave Whitford of Ottawa. Next letter is from Gander, Newfoundland. Mr. Whalen, I enjoy your show, Pro Wrestling Plus, the best show anywhere. I'd like to make a suggestion is that, and that's why don't the Bulldogs go up against the Cuban Commandos. They have the experience, they would beat the Commandos easily, and in case you didn't know it, the British Bulldogs were WWF Tag Team Champions. Mr. Jeff Parsons of Gander, Newfoundland. Well, as you well know, I'm sure by now, Mr. Parsons, shortly after this letter was written in early December, the Cuban Commandos did collide with the Bulldogs, and the Bulldogs came away with the belts, the new international tag team champion. So that was an interesting development. Mr. Parsons adds, uh, let me see, in your next Matt Classic, I'd like to see a match between Hulk Hogan and the Iron Sheik when Hogan defeated Sheik for the WWF title in 1984. I'm sorry we don't have access to WWF material. We have tried that form of cooperation in the past and have been unsuccessful. Clifford Daverick of Marmora, Ontario. Ed, I hope I'm not bugging you and sending you these newsletters. Sorry it's such a short note. Yours truly, Clifford Daverick. Clifford, we're always delighted to hear from you, and he collects uh, various news items out of papers to show us what's going on. Uh, this particular paper out of Toronto was written right about the time that we had that letter from Mr. Parsons indicating here in the paper, last minute negotiations to keep the British Bulldogs in the WWF proved unsuccessful, and they have returned to Calgary Stampede Wrestling. Also in the Stampede City is Don the Rock, Morocco. Attendance has jumped. Watch for the Killer Bees and the Junkyard Dog to follow uh, suit, and I believe, incidentally, there will be other wrestlers coming to the Calgary area to add further to the caliber of wrestling in that particular territory. Hey now, we gotta take a commercial break. After that, we'll be right back to give you the address for Fan Forum. Here it is, just drop us a line to Fan Forum, Box 807, Station J, Calgary, T2A, 1P0, got that? Fan Forum, Box 807, Station J, Calgary, T2A, 1P0. The clock on yonder wall tells us we got to get us right on out of here, okay? It's been a pleasure being with you, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. When again, it is time for Pro Wrestling Flux. Goodbye, now.